we are starting to see the supply picking up in both Manhattan and Brooklyn. 18 contracts signed in the luxury market. You want buyers to see you as best in class all the way around. Welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market, where I take a look at the luxury market, the Manhattan market, and the Brooklyn market. I do it because I want you to be informed. It never hurts when you're a consumer to be informed. Welcome to this week's look at the state of the New York City real estate market. This is for the week of September 4th to September 10th. Interestingly, there were 18 contracts signed last week. That is the same as the week before. That's properties priced at 4 million and above. Five of those contracts were properties that were priced at 10 million and above. Those are the trophy properties. Eight of those properties were uptown, 10 were downtown, 11 were condos, four were co-ops, and three were townhouses. The number one contract that was signed last week in the luxury market was apartment 92E at 217 West 57th Street. It was asking a little over 34 million. It was reduced from a little over 38 million when the building started marketing in 2018. The unit has almost 12 foot ceilings. It's a little over 4,200 square feet. It includes four bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, beautiful views of Central Park from the living room, the dining room, and the eating kitchen. The unit is in Central Park Tower. It is a 1,550 foot skyscraper. It has 179 units, over 50,000 square feet of amenities, including indoor, outdoor pools, fitness center, children's playroom, club room with a ballroom, bar, dining facilities, and a cigar lounge. The number two contract was the eighth floor at 1165 Madison Avenue, asking $22 million. This was listed at the end of August and it sold over the asking price. There were multiple bidders on the property. The unit has over 6,000 square feet. It has nearly 14 foot tall ceilings five bedrooms, six and a half bathrooms. The unit is in the newly completed 12 unit, 13 story building, the Bellamont. It is designed by architect Robert A.M. Stern. The amenities include a concierge, fitness center, squash court, roof terrace, children's playroom, and a screening room. The seller paid a little over 19 million for this back in May of 20. If we take a look at the quick stats for last week, we see that the total weekly asking price sales volume was $189,234,000, the average asking price $10,513,000, median asking price $7,122,500, average discount from original ask to last asking price 5%, average days on market 948. That's it for the luxury market. Any questions, please post those below. Now we're going to take a look at what happened in Manhattan. We see a huge bump in the supply in Manhattan for last week. 610 properties came on the market last week. Wow, that is a jump of almost 330%. We saw a little bit of a drop in the contract sign, not a huge amount, a little over 10%, 125. We saw a little bit of a rise in the con- in the off market, almost 13%, 219. As well, we saw a little rise for the month in the supply as well, 1125, that's a little over 4%. We saw a decline also in the contract sign, 662 for the month down about 28% and the off market down about 13%, 688. If we take a look at the market pulse, we see that just the very tail end of this, we're starting to see that this is heading a little bit downward. Why? Because we're seeing more inventory coming on and a little less demand. The liquidity pace, this 30-day moving window, also an indicator of the falling demand, 662. We see the fall kicking off uh, with an increase in supply in Manhattan. We see the demand 
you know, being still a little sluggish, which we would expect in September. And we see a spike in the new listings, what we hope for also in September. And the number of contracts signed dropped a bit. We would expect this in September. Uh, we don't really see the contract activity pick up in the fall until around October. Okay, that's it for Manhattan. Please post your questions below. I'm going to sum this all up for you at the end of my report, but now we're going to move on and take a look at what happened in Brooklyn. Just as with Manhattan, we see a bit of a bump in the supply for the week. 242 properties came on the market. That's up 118%. We saw a tiny little bump in the contract sign 94. That's up a little over 2%. And we saw the off-market properties drop. 51 properties off the market, that's down almost 53% for the week. If we look at the monthly supply for Brooklyn, we see 618 down, a little over 23%. Contracts signed, 456 down 30%. Off-market, 287 down almost 2%. As with Manhattan, we are starting to see that market pulse just starting to change. We're starting to see some more inventory coming on. We are still seeing a little more activity in terms of contract activity than we are in Manhattan. So we're not seeing as much of a decline or an imbalance, but we're definitely seeing a shift. You can see from the liquidity pace chart, 456. We were down, but now we're starting to come up just a little bit. We had, saw a surprising little bit of activity there in the contract activity just in the last week. If we look at the supply, we see it ticking up a little bit post Labor Day, which is great. The demand overall ticking down. New listings definitely on the rebound. Hooray for that. Contract signed you know, a bit of a slump to be expected in September. That's it for Brooklyn. Any questions on that, please post those below. We're going to sum it up now. It's basically 18 contracts signed in the luxury market, same as the week before. Let's move on though. Let's really focus this on Manhattan and Brooklyn. We are starting to see the supply picking up in both Manhattan and Brooklyn. That is great going to get buyers more choices and we're going to start to see the buyers re-engaging and getting out there. They're already starting to get out now in this last week looking at properties and starting to think about what they're going to be making offers on. And then hopefully true to form we're going to start to see things going into contract in October. So sellers, let's start with you. What does this mean? You definitely want to be getting your property on the market over the next few weeks. You want to make sure that you're positioning yourself as best in class. That means that you want to be sure that your asking price is compelling. You want buyers to see you as best in class all the way around. You want to stand out as the thing that buyers want to see the minute you come on the market. And you want to try to get yourself into contract within the first 30 days. Why? Because that's when you're going to make the most money. Buyers, you're going to start to see more inventory coming on the market. You're already seeing it. That's great. You're going to have more choices. You may not have as much leverage or negotiability with some of these new properties, especially if the sellers are being strategic. If you see something that's just come on the market and you really love it, you may have to either get close to the asking price, or in some cases, you may even have to compete for it with other buyers. If you're really looking for a deal, as I've said previously, you may want to look at those properties that have been on the market for a while, because that's where you're likely to have the most leverage. Okay, that's it. Any questions, please reach out to me. You can post them below. You can reach out directly to me at Sotheby's. As always, I want to thank Urban Digs and the Olshan Luxury Report. The work that they do helps me to help you to make great decisions. I will be back next week with the very latest news on what's happening in the New York City real estate market. In the meantime, take care. Thank you.